There's a quote from Seth Godin that I love to post in the Becoming Minimalist Facebook page. And the quote goes like this. Instead of wondering when your next vacation is, maybe you should try to set up a life you don't need to escape from. Most people like the quote, but some people always complain and have negative feedback. Typically they'll tell me, yeah, but traveling is a lot of fun and vacations are good. And I don't disagree with that in any degree. What the quote is trying to say is rather than seeing vacation as something you take to escape your life, try to make your life so enjoyable that you don't need to escape from it. And this isn't easy, but it is entirely possible. In fact, to a great extent, I feel like I've done that with my life. I love my life every single day. I love the weekdays as much as the weekend. I love Monday as much as I love Saturday. I love my life every single day. And so I've put some thought into how do we do this? How do we craft a life that we don't need to escape from? Let me give you what I think are the nine keys to accomplishing that. A bit more than normal, but I think all nine are so important that I wanted to include them. Number one, make relationships a priority in life. The old adage is true, that the greatest happiness in life is found when we are loved and when we love. Relationships, more than anything else, bring us happiness in life. And so make them a priority. Don't push them off so you can make more money or pursue a different career or a new spot in your corporation that you work in. Focus on relationships. It's important to note, I think that there are two aspects to that relationship, that there are people who know us and love us, and that there are relationships in our lives where we are pouring love into another. But that's the first step to crafting a life that you don't need to escape from. Number two, remove unneeded possessions from your life. Unneeded physical things take up time and money and space and energy. Most of us don't realize how much of a burden our possessions have become until we begin to remove them. So free yourself from the stuff you don't need so you can craft a life focused on the things that you actually do. Number three, make your work your job. Uh, Vicki Robin um, taught me a lot about this and she's been very helpful to me in knowing the difference between our work and our job. She would say that our job is what we do to provide shelter and clothing and food, but our work is the good that we want to bring into the world. It's how we want to serve others and serve society. It's the things that we're passionate about, the problems that we want to solve. If it's possible, if you can make your work, your passion, the same thing that pays your bills, then you have reached a sweet spot in life and there's less need to escape from it. But allow me to mention number four here, and that is this. See your job as part of your work. Because the reality is that not everyone gets to make a living by pursuing causes that they are passionate about. Sometimes the immediacy of life's demands require us to do a job that we're not particularly passionate about. But we need to do it. It's responsible for ourselves. It's how we're responsible to our family. So sometimes we find a job that isn't necessarily our work. I think in that scenario, it's important to notice how our job is still benefiting society and how the job that we hold can still be something good that we're bringing about into the world. And in that way, we begin to see our job as part of our work, something good that we're doing for others. 
It's an important distinction I've always found helpful in life, and I hope you do as well. Number five, back to how do I craft a life that I don't need to escape from. Number five, guard your time. The reality is that not everything in life is worthy of your hours and your days and your time and your energy. Sometimes even good causes aren't worthy of your time and your money and your energy and your day if you are more passionate about something else. So guard your time, learn how to say no to others, and focus on those things that you are most passionate about. Number six, take care of yourself. Now look, there is little joy to be found in a selfish life. I I believe this to be true, and you know this to be true, that the greatest joy, the greatest happiness we find is when we live a selfless life that serves others and helps others and provides benefit to others. So let's keep that in mind. But the reality is that it is tough to pour into another person's life from an empty cup. And so we do need to take care of our own selves. We need rest, and we need exercise, and we need to eat healthy, and we need to have healthy habits. We need to take care of ourselves so that we can live a selfless life for others. Number seven, as I think through how to craft a life that you don't need to escape from, number seven is we need to appreciate the season of life that we're in. Just like the weather changes, so does our life. You may have young children, you may have teenagers, you may be an empty nester, you may be um, single in your 20s, you may be a combination of any of those different things. The seasons of life change as we progress through life. If you are going to enjoy the one you're in, you need to embrace it. I see a lot of people who constantly want to get to the next season of life where I see people who look back at a previous season of life and wish that they were living there, if that's you in either direction, then you're not going to love the life you're living today. So appreciate the season. It may not be your favorite season of life, but there are still good things in it. So notice it and embrace it and live it to the fullest because it's going to change soon enough. Number eight, accept the reality that there are trials in life, that there is no perfect life. Maybe you're just emerging from a trial. Maybe you're in the middle of one right now. If neither of those two are true, you're probably heading towards one pretty soon. Life isn't perfect. Sometimes it's messy and sometimes it's difficult. When we expect life to be perfect all the time, We have a hard time embracing the reality and the truthfulness that life isn't always perfect. So acknowledge the fact that it's just a matter of living, that this is going to happen. Number two, look for the good in the trial that you're in. As hard as you can, try to find some joy, try to find some good in what's happening, even if it's who you are going to become after you go through it. But if we want to learn to appreciate the life we're living, at some point we have to acknowledge that reality and learn how to see the good in it. And the final thought is this. Know that you can experience happiness every single day. Or at least happiness isn't going to be found by changing your circumstances. If you're in this mindset that says, once this changes, if that changes, I will be happy, I will enjoy my life, you'll never get there because there'll always be something that you want to change. Happiness isn't something to be chased after. It's something to be recognized and discovered in the place that you are right now. I started this video with a quote from Seth Godin. It is important. 
It's guided my life in a lot of different ways. Instead of wondering when your next vacation is, maybe you should work to craft a life that you don't need to escape from. It's not always easy, but you can do it. Many people have. You can as well.